Hello everybody, I am Vanessa Steg. Welcome to the What's New in Rhino 6 for Mac video series. In this chapter, we will be demoing some of the new features related to modeling and editing in Rhino 6 for Mac. Before we get started, you might have noticed that my UI might look a little bit different than yours. That is because I have activated what we call the ribbon bar. The ribbon bar is composed of different tabs that allow me to quickly select tools related to different geometry types or editing modes. If you'd like to activate the ribbon bar, go over to the Rhinoceros menu, Preferences, click on Themes, and select Rhino for Windows or Custom, and check Show Ribbon Bar. Once done, make sure you open a new file to load the ribbon bar. I'd like to start with the gumball. Although the gumball is not new to B6, there have been quite a few improvements. To activate the gumball, make sure you click on it over at the top in the modeling aids bar. Then, when you select any geometry on screen, you'll see the widget appear. It is composed of different icons. Arrows for translation, square handles for scaling, and arcs for rotating. You can simply move these around to see what happens or click inside to enter different numeric values. You'll also notice that different planes appear as I move and rotate the view around. These planes will allow me to move my object in two directions. If I pull on any of the square handles, I'll be scaling 1D. By pressing the Shift command, I can scale in all three dimensions. We can also scale in two dimensions by pressing Shift and pulling on the plane icon. To access the gumball settings, you can left-click the bunny tail. You'll find different possibilities for aligning the gumball, snappy dragging to make the gumball origin pay attention to object snaps, as well as the option to relocate the gumball. Relocating plus snappy dragging allows me to align my gumball and position it elsewhere on my object, allowing for any edits to happen from the new origin. If you want to learn more about the gumball, make sure to visit our video on our YouTube channel. Let's move on to the new gumball features. When I select an object type that is eligible for extruding, you'll see a new sphere icon appear midway along the arrow. By pulling on it, I can extrude that geometry. Now, let me do that again. So not only do I have the ability to quickly extrude, but I can now extrude points into lines. And then, of course, lines into surfaces and surfaces into polysurfaces. Let me do that again. This time, I will select my point, pull on the extrusion handle, and press down the shift key at the same time. This will allow me to extrude both sides, leaving the input geometry in the middle. This is also a new cool feature in Rhino 6. Again, my line plus shift extruded into a surface and my surface extruded both ways into a poly surface. Another new addition to Rhino 6. And let's go over to the top view. Is the ability to sub-object select poly curves. Now this is considered a single geometry in Rhino but it is composed of multiple curve segments. By pressing down Command plus Shift, I can access one of those curve segments within my polycurve. I can then delete or simply edit it. Sub-object selecting curves is new to Rhino 6, but this feature is already present for other geometry types in previous versions of Rhino. I'd like to quickly go through it as it might not be a very well-known feature in Rhino. 
on screen I have a poly surface. This is considered again a single object in Rhino. Whatever modifications I apply to it, it'll apply globally to the object. Now I do know that a poly surface is composed of multiple parts. In this case, I have a top and bottom cap and a cylindrical surface. With sub-object selection, I can access any of these parts and modify it independently. I need to press down Command and Shift and click on the part that I'd like to modify. At this point, I can extrude, creating an edge that separates my initial extrusion from the second one. And again, Command Shift, selecting my surface again to scale it or extrude and so forth. And all of this while preserving the integrity of my poly surface. This is still considered a single solid and rhino. Keep tuned for our next video on curve enhancements in Rhino 6 for Mac.